WCW Monday Nitro, January 8th, 2001. 12 episodes to go. Thank God. And we're just Yeah, but the they're going to be brutal because like Goldberg leaves after they're, they're the show. They're horrible. They're horrible, but knowing there's only 12 episodes to go and there's you know we are watching a company on its way out the door anyway. So who cares? I, I I'm not going to get angry about any of this. It'll there will be horrible things on here. But I'm not going to get angry cuz I don't care. I know they die. This Thunder recap. What a catastrophe. The only thing I know about Thunder is like three minutes. Sanders was there. The cat was there. Jarrett was there. Flair was there. Sid was there. The mystery man was there. But it turned out to be a fake mystery man. It was Scott Steiner in disguise. The one concrete thing I got out of this Thunder recap was this was the Thunder where Chronic put Goldberg in a box. They put him in a box, so Shivani screamed. Well, I mean, they did. It's not quite the same as damn his soul. No, it's definitely not that good. Flair comes out for a promo. They're in Minnesota. So he sucks up to the fans. Tells, oh. them, tells them the Minnesota Vikings are going to kick ass. And I believe they lost that weekend 40 to nothing. This, by the way, keep in mind as we review this, this is the go-home show for the pay-per-view entitled Sin. Yeah. Which WWE got the trademark for because... Oh, this is a legacy you got to maintain. <laughs> yeah. We got to make sure Cody got some good ones, so hey, we'll one-up him. We'll get Sin. We'll get Sin. So Flair, for the pay-per-view, books Sanders versus Cat for the commissionership. He calls out Jeff Jarrett. And for the next five minutes, they went back and forth as I tried to figure out what the main event for Sin was, who was being added, and who was being taken out. I was very confused the entire time. I believe, at first, it was Jarrett versus Steiner versus Sid in a three-way, with Jarrett claiming he only got himself in the match so he would be there to protect his buddy. Flair announces there will be no three-way, and angry Scott Steiner appears. Says, no, no, it will be me and Jeff versus your mystery partner. Even though it's by himself, it's still a mystery partner in Scott Steiner's world. Flair insists it's a four-way. Steiner says it would be himself, Jarrett, the mystery man, and Sid. Flair then shows footage of Jarrett lying to Steiner and accidentally hitting Steiner with a guitar at Starcade. Says, Steiner, you can't trust anyone, and I am booking you versus Jeff Jarrett for the title tonight. Stop right there. There's going to be a four-way for the world title six days from here, and both of these guys are in that four-way. Why should they care who wins the title tonight? They can win it back then. This is dumb. He threatens to st strip Steiner of the title if he does not comply. Says he won't get his main event. I had no idea what the hell was going on through any of this. I should note that when the mystery man unmasked on Thunder and it was Steiner... I mean, it was very clear that that wasn't the mystery man because Steiner was the one who saw the mystery man. Yes. They were, they, we have seen those two men together at the same time. Yes, Steiner, okay. this was Steiner pretending to be the mystery man to fool Sid. But I mean, on top of that, like, no one knows who the fucking mystery man is. No, it's a mystery. Yeah. Why is a mystery man? So like every time they're talking about like Flair goes, it's going to be the mystery man. It's like, you don't even know who the mystery man is. You know what I'm saying? He may not, yeah. No one knows. Yeah. And this gets weirder, by the way. <laughs> Goldberg and Sarge arrive at the building. Goldberg begins to assault innocent men and demand to know where Chronic is. Instead of just asking nicely. They say Chronic's down that way. And now that I think about it, I don't think they ever found Chronic. Sanders is ranting about having to face the cat. He books Big Ron of the Harris Boys against the cat for tonight, instructing him to take the cat out so Sanders can beat him at uh, Sin. Yeah. Shane Douglas confronts Ric Flair. He wants to be in that four-way, so Flair gives him a shot against Sid tonight, and I guess if Shane had won, he would be in the four-way. Well, he gets Sid's spot in the four-way. There you go, yeah. He yeah, wins. Yeah. That's it, yeah. They don't make it a five-way. No. That, yeah. That did make sense. Thank you, Ryan. Shannon Moore versus Chavo Guerrero. Now, apparently also, it was explained later that Douglas wants to be in the title match, but apparently he's already got a match against Huge Erection, right? At some point. Yeah. 
So Chavo is out here to face Shannon. Chavo is the cruiserweight champion. He cuts. let me try this one. All right. Okay. Chavo is the cruiserweight champion. He is facing Shannon Moore tonight. Yes. And he will face Shane Helms at the pay per view. Right. All right. I got all that. That's all correct. Okay. So Chavo then cuts a promo, and he says, "My match with Shannon tonight was supposed to be a non-title match." But I am putting the title on the line tonight. So if I lose, I will get a rematch with Shannon on Sunday. And Shane, you'll be out of luck. That's what he said. So he's so concerned about facing Shane Helms that he'll lose to Shannon to avoid fighting him. That's his plan. But if he wins, he's fighting him anyway. And he tries to win. Vinny, what in the fuck was this? Well, for the sake of argument, I think his plan was to convince Helms to protect his title shot by screwing his buddy Shannon. Because the only way Shane gets his title shot is if Shannon But then loses he just here. did the match and just beat him. That's what happened. I can't take 12 more weeks of this, Vinny. Now, I'm running low on steam. You can argue with the logic, and it's horrible. I think the bigger issue is Chavo Guerrero's delivery of this promo, which was total amateur hour. It was All, bad. Every fan from WWF New York and the other show was better than this. Yeah. Horrible. Chavo, Chavo wins. Chavo wins. The highlight of this match was Helms on commentary when he was talking about Chavo's feud with Jamie Knobel. Yes. Chavo wins this match. And then afterwards, he goes to beat up Shannon with suplexes. Well, it's, a, it's supposed to be a brain buster. <laughs> he attacks him with the wrestling moves. You know how in... And in, Shane runs in to make the save. This was this was actually... It was like New Japan where a guy hit a vertical suplex. They called it a brain buster. Mm. That's exactly what happened. And uh, the other note, highlight here was Shannon trying to do a dive. Just like from the top rope. Just like a high cross off the top rope. And I don't know what the hell happened. To, or Travo tried to catch him, but what actually happened was... Shannon fell, and Chavo hit him with an accidental shoot backbreaker. Where he could have broken Shannon's ribs and his own leg. Mike Sanders is backstage. He beats up Kiwi. <laughs> what the hell was this? Okay, so first off, Mike Sanders beats up Kiwi, okay? Big Vito. Who? Is that his name? Big That's his Vito? name. What's Big Vito doing there? Well, I don't know, but Big Vito makes a save. And Vito says to Mike Sanders, pick on somebody you can fight. Since when was Kiwi not a fighter? I don't know. His entire gimmick is when he gets mad, you don't want to make him mad, right? I believe that's the case, yes. So Vito, not the chat, Vito. Vito then says, come with me, Kiwi. Let's go take karate lessons. Brian, <laughs> Brian, I will read you exactly what I wrote down at the end of this. I have no idea what is going on, and there is no longer reason to care. No, these baby. twelve episodes. Listen, a weight has been lifted. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Listen, I feel baby. lighter. I don't. Life care. is easier. I don't care about a lot, but I need to know why Big Vito is taking Kiwi to take karate lessons. Maybe he knows a really good dojo in Staten Island. Is that where he's from? Brooklyn. He know? does do a lot of super kicks. He does. This is stupid. It is, Brian. Nitro in 2001 was very stupid. Oh, speaking of, Ron Harris is going to face the Shat, okay? Mm -hmm. So, of course, both Harris brothers come out. So Shat gets in the ring and he says, I'm not going to be stupid tonight. These are his exact words. I'm not going to be stupid tonight, okay? So when he says that, I thought, well, he's going to announce that he has someone here to watch his back. Because both of Chronic are out there, Harris right? Brothers. Both Harris brothers are out there. Right. So he says, I'm not going to do anything stupid tonight. He then proceeds to make fun of both of Chronic. Uh, Harris they brothers? Dub they whatever. They double team him, beat the shit out of him, stomp a fucking mud hole in him. I hit him. So, in fact, he did something very, very dumb. Brian? Now, before they pin him, Miss Jones, 
who's his manager, <laughs> she takes the ref. Yes. The Harrises then double team Shat, H bomb him, and pin him. That's right. So Shat is fucking dumb. Yes. Miss Jones is fucking dumb. Yes. They're the baby faces. Yes. This show's awful. There's a reason WCW died. Is there another holiday coming? There you can, can we take Martin Luther King Day off and I mean, Valentine's Day? That's two at least. <laughs> this show is very, very dumb. What fucking day is Valentine's Day. Gene Oakland interviews the cat. I'm looking for any excuse. The cat is so upset. Ah, by this fuck, it's a Friday. Double team and beating he suffered at the hands of the Harrises that he dances. Yeah. General Erection meets Oh, then Sid. Gene says James Brown is rolling over. Mm -hmm. He wasn't dead. He didn't say it in his grave. He just said rolling over. Oh, he's a dog? He's an, up an upset a dancer. So he rolls over? <laughs> he didn't say in his grave, Brian. It's not like That's Madden. what he meant. Maybe it was a rib on Madden for saying Bruno was rolling over his grave or whoever it was. Yeah, Madden's gone. He's history. <clears throat> Disco is now doing commentary. Did Dis we mention that? Disco was on commentary. Yes. He, was, he was fine. General Erection meets with Sid. Says, I know you're facing the franchise tonight. Just save me a little piece of the franchise for Sid. And Sid agrees and giggles and they bump knuckles. Huge Erection is facing the man that franchises everyone's ass. Yes. I just want you to know that. Oh, the, the, believe me, that's made abundantly clear later. Yes. Jarrett and Steiner are shown hashing, th hashing things out. Gene interviews the natural born thrillers. Mike Sanders says It's a whole crew of Kevin Nash's, by the way. <laughs> and virtually none of them made it in this business, with him as their legit mentor. Mike Sanders says he is very upset that he was jumped by Kiwi and Vito. Thus, he says he's I could have maybe he, I thought he said this. He was booking Kiwi and Vito. Versus randomly selected opponents. And he kept using that phrase, randomly selected opponents, emphasizing it so you, the viewer at home, no matter how dumb you were, knew these opponents were not randomly selected. Well, I think it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be like a like a five-way. That's what we got. Then. And so it was going to be the two of them versus three randomly selected opponents. And this would be dubbed the Minnesota Massacre. Anyone who interferes, he says, are subject to fines and suspensions. Didn't he know that they left the building to take karate lessons? I'm moving on. Luger and Bagwell meet with Chronic, warn them that Goldberg is looking for them, and they say you have a match, the two of you, against Goldberg and Sarge. And Chronic is upset that Luger and Bagwell have booked them in a match. They say, that's not us. That's just Flair. He's in charge. But look at the opportunity. If you beat Goldberg or if you beat Sarge, then Goldberg is fired. And Chronic says, well, that sounds like a good deal. Last thing we need is the cash then. And they hold their hands and say, sorry, it's a WCW sanctioned match. It's not a, our favor. There's no cash involved. That was five backstage segments in a row, by the way. And then a promo in the ring. Yeah. Team Canada comes out. Hacksaw Duggan is gone, replaced by Mike Awesome. Mike Awesome is Canadian now. Yeah, what in the fuck happened there? Don't know. Okay. He apparently brought along his bus to Team Canada, and they made it the Canadian bus. But then the filthy animals vandalized the Canadian bus with paint. So Lance here challenges the filthy animals for the pay-per-view to a Canadian penalty box match. Now, let's make this abundantly clear as we move on in the show. What that means is anybody who breaks a rule is put in a box. Okay. Just want to make that clear. That's if you break a rule, mm -hmm. you're put in a box. And your team must fight on shorthanded. Yes. I have heard of worse stupid gimmick matches. That's not the problem. Okay. I'll get to the problem later. Lance Storm versus Billy Kidman. Disco buries Kidman saying Everything, this guy needs to find a gym. He, What you said about Zack Sabre Jr. is Disco talking about Billy Kidman. <laughs> yeah, I was howling. I was like, God, Disco must love wrestling nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, that so, Kidman needed to find a gym. Lance gets a hold of a chair with the, ref, with the ref's back turned. He wedges the chair in the corner and is just sitting there for five minutes. And the ref doesn't care. They go back and forth. Eventually, Lance goes into the chair. The ref doesn't care. Mike Awesome interferes. The ref doesn't care. 
The two armies get into a brawl. The ref doesn't care. Kidman wins with a kid crusher. Yeah, Kidman is about to win when he when Lance goes into the chair. But Major Guns, Mike Awesome, yank Lance out of the ring. The giant brawl breaks out. And after all that, Kidman just pinned him anyway. Yeah. What the fuck did we need all of this interference in a giant brawl for if you were just going to do the finish that the interference was preventing in the first if place? If you were trying to protect Lance, you could have had his head go into a chair and then get pinned because then he got screwed. As it is, Lance got hit with a wrestling move and pinned. And by the way, that builds to a penalty box match how? I don't know. Okay, just check it. Shane Douglas is a promo. He vows to franchise Sid's ass, get into the four-way at Sin, and then franchise Hugh G. Rection's ass. <laughs> Don't look at me. That's what he said. So we get Shane Douglas versus Sid Vicious. This show is so wacky and so weird. And there's 800 things going on. That when Shane Douglas and Fid Sid Vicious get in the ring and have a straight wrestling match. I was caught completely off guard. One of the greatest lines in the history of The Observer was when Dave talked about how Shane Douglas was going to open a chain of restaurants called Shane Douglas's Ass. Yes. So they're building the finish here. And Shane goes to the belly to belly suplex. And I know he's not going to hit it because Sid would never get suplexed by anybody. But even if he was, he's a giant. It's, it would be ridiculous for Shane Douglas to suplex this man. But Sid can't just not be <laughs> suplexed. It was so great. Sid has to wrap his leg around Shane's and block it with a leg, leg grapevine, block the suplex, hit the choke slam and the power bomb, and win. Not just block the suplex, Vinny, but but widen his eyes <laughs> and mean mug so you, the viewer, know how hard he is working to avoid this suplex. That's correct. Let it be known that on what I am pretty sure is Sid Vicious's, Sid Vicious's last match on Nitro. Yeah, this is it. He out-grappled Shane Douglas. Yes. That he, is a fact. He is a guilty pleasure. And then afterwards, Steiner and Jarrett run down. They start beating up Sid. They try to toss him over the barricade into the crowd, but Sid somehow gets stuck upside down. <laughs> His feet are fucking sticking straight up in the air, and he can't turn over. I was crying. I was crying with laughter and with sadness because he is a week away from shattering his leg yeah. into oblivion. Yeah. This sucks. So, to recap, the last thing we saw before going to commercial was the world champion and his buddy attacking the challenger in the crowd. It's a chaotic, hectic, wild scene. Yes. We fade to black and we come back and Mean Gene is interviewing Ric Flair backstage like nothing happened. Yeah. Let me let me tackle this, because this is what I wanted to talk about. Okay. So first, Flair says Sanders is out of control. And he says Steiner, Vicious, and Jarrett are running wild. He says Steiner and Jarrett are in the main event tonight, and if they don't go all out, he will suspend both of them and strip Scott Steiner of the title. Okay, fine. So then Gene says, well, what about this penalty box match? Ric Flair says, oh, it will be wild. There will probably be blood and broken bones. That's what he said. I'm like, the rules of this match are, if you break a rule, you're put in a box. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I there's do. no theoretically cleaner match in the history of wrestling. If you grab a guy's neck, you're in the box. If you hit him with a closed fist, you're in the fucking box. Ric Flair's thinking there's going to be blood and broken bones in a fucking match where you're put in a box if you break a rule. What? That strained credulity. Oh, excellent. Thank you. And then Hacksaw comes out. He's the referee. He's a special referee for this yes. match. Yes. He comes in. Makes fun of everybody. Shirtless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's there's a lot of Hacksaw on this show. <laughs> He's... Buries everyone in Team Canada, how stupid they are. He makes fun of Elix for being too small. Yes. He makes fun of Lance saying he's never had a real fight or something. You may be the best technical wrestler, but you can't fight a lick. That's right. I'm like, my God, dude. What do you say about Mike Awesome? Something about how I'll probably call him called him stupid. My favorite part of the Hacksaw promo is where he attempts to say penalty box match. What actually came out, I watched this like 20 times, laughing harder every time. What came out of his mouth was 
Penalty mock back march. <laughs> well, and he just moved that, on. That might lead to broken bones. Maybe and that's blood. What, maybe that's what Flair was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. that's what he's thinking of. The penalty mock back march. <laughs> uh, Terry Funk comes out for a promo. Oh my god! This fucking thing. You know what's bad about it? Everything. Well, this would have been all right if Daphne wasn't there on the stage she fucking was, around with sparklers. She is probably the worst part of it. While these two are trying to cut like a serious promo about hardcore and legacy and the history of wrestling and idols. Like they're trying so hard. And Daphne's there fucking around with sparklers. It was impossible to take seriously. So Terry Funk says Flair is trying to destroy him by putting, putting him against nobodies like Crowbar. If you wrestle a nobody, that makes you a nobody. I want Goldberg or Scott Steiner or DDP or Meng. Crowbar, of course, is upset. He rants about how he's not a nobody and uh, was not supposed to be like this. Disco asks, what are these guys talking about? And I said, I don't know, Disco. I don't know either. They're talking about ECW and looking up to each other and who's a nobody. And yes, the whole time. And they, they, they could have zoomed in on Crowbar would have helped. But you can see Daphne, she is on out to lunch. She has sparklers, she's sticking her tongue out, she's dancing to no music. Crowd doesn't care about any of these three people. Yeah, because it was comedy as soon as she started doing that shit. But it, it, if it was comedy, they would have laughed. Well, I mean, I mean, bad comedy, but... They, 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 they all left. Eventually, Meng appears, he laid out Daphne and Terry Funk and Crowbar, and it eventually is booked for a three-way for the pay-per-view. This was mind-boggling, I wrote. Speaking of mind-boggling, Jimmy Hart is still calling out DJs. Oh, my God. Does he do this until the, the day question? they die? Why didn't I accept that challenge? I was on a yada. You did kick Jimmy Hart's ass. I'm confident. We see Mike Sanders' empty office. We see his jacket hanging from a coat hanger. A phantom limb comes in from off screen, pulls an envelope out of the jacket pocket, and puts a different envelope in into the jacket pocket and the announcers are bewildered what did we just see says scott hudson well some dude took an envelope out of a jacket and put another envelope in that's what i saw it's accurate i don't know what you saw goldberg and sarge versus chronic starts off with a brawl settles down into a, a, a tag team match and goldberg gets the hot tag as goldberg is running wild totally buff comes out and they begin to attack sarge's broken arm Goldberg doesn't see this until it is too late. He spears both dudes in chronic, pins one with a jackhammer. And then totally buff lay out everyone, meaning Sarge and Goldberg and also chronic. Mm. So I guess we're getting the worst three-way tag match of all time between these six men. Sanders comes out for a promo. He welcomes us to the Minnesota Massacre. I did like that last segment, by the way. Did you? Yeah, it was a good heat angle. It was very simple. Goldberg's there with his trainer. The bad guys beat up the trainer. They rip off his, his gimmick, and they hit Goldberg with it, and thought it was good. If they had not... Why did they have to attack Chronic 2? I don't know. That's stupid, but I mean, the rest of it. Right. Sanders welcomes us to the Minnesota Massacre. Claims to have an envelope... This whole goddamn show was a Minnesota Massacre. ...of randomly selected participants. If you're not in this envelope, he says, you are banned from ringside. I even not got my gear on just in case my name is in this envelope. He asks David Penzer to read the names. We are told it is a last man standing match. The first name is Mike Sanders. The second name is Chuck Palumbo. Vinny is not properly expressing to you how fucking long it took to say each of these names. It was like five minutes in between names. Like there was some sort of, I don't know. It was a very small font. At least that meant the match was shorter. David Pender had to squint. So it's Sanders, Palumbo, and O'Hare, and this clearly is all their plan. But then the fourth name is DDP, and the fifth name is Kevin Nash. Sanders is screaming, it's not supposed to be this way. What are you jacked up geeks doing in here? By the way, yeah, Queeby and Vito are not in this match, as it turns out. So the bell rings, the match begins. Is this a handicap match? Is no, it I a told you it's a five royal? way. It's a five way last man standing. I guess. I don't even know. All I know is that Nash and DDP cleverly added themselves to a handicap match, basically. 
Where they it's were two on three. Yes, that was their plan. Yeah, and somehow they won a last man standing match. The, the two of them won a last man standing match. The other thrillers tried to interfere, even though Sanders said they would be suspended if they did. Kiwi and Vito blocked them. They did not go take karate lessons, Brian. The insiders hit their finishes. And, and here's the best part. There was a part here where there was a quadruple down, and Sanders thought he was going to win, and so he's standing in the ring, arms crossed, all, all arrogant, and DDP nut shots him. While that was going on, the ref was doing a 10 count. So it's the last man standing match. They have to have a 10 count to win. When the insiders hit their finishes, ref just says, good enough, and he calls for the bell. <laughs> Two men won the last man standing match with no count. Whatever. Scott Steiner and his lavender chainmail. Where the hell did he get this? Cut a promo bragging about all the people he's put in the hospital. Jared is showing and sitting this match is not going to happen. So Scott Steiner versus Jared. They both come out. They have the music, the pyro, the whole bit. They say they're not going to wrestle. Flair appears. Threatens to take away, to strip them of the title and take away the main event at Sin. So now Jared is agitated. He puts his hands on Bedeja. This, of course, infuriates Steiner. Steiner attacks. The match begins. Okay. Having a match. It's fine. They begin to do near falls. When Sid runs in and attacks. Yeah. Now, you're probably thinking that I should say Sid runs in and attacks for the DQ. But it wasn't a DQ. It wasn't. I wrote a DQ. Sid ran in and attacked. It was not a DQ. The mystery man, the only way you can say this, waddled down to the <laughs> ring. You know what's funny, though? The mystery man was funny. <laughs> well, he's always funny, but like, when he waddled down to the ring, that was Rick Steiner. Right. I know that waddle. <laughs> and what was funny is, like, uh, it must be because we're watching all of the, the 1988 NWA and he's all over that show. But like... I knew his waddle immediately. I'm like, that's fucking Rick Steiner. Now, the mystery man never unmasks on this show, so they could have put anybody underneath the costume. Sure. But I knew that that was Rick Steiner. He starts throwing his punches, and I'm like, that's Rick Steiner. <laughs> if you want to call it that. Whatever it is. But the funniest thing is, the fans start barking. <laughs> they all knew that waddle. <laughs> so, the mystery man costume is... Ridiculous. Beyond how horrible it looks, I'm now convinced that it's like one of those, when they're training police dogs, the suits the guys wear of armor. Oh, no. They, they would never survive in this. He can't move. <laughs> he cannot move. When I was like 11 years old, I got this, this book, and it had a bunch of costumes that you could make for Halloween out of paper mache. And so I made like this alien costume or something like that. And it was, you had to have felt and cardboard and paper mache and all of this stuff. It took me forever to make this costume. And it was, it was horrible, but I loved it. That's what the mystery man costume looks like. If you took this. He looks like a spaceman. If you took this mystery man costume and painted it red instead of black, he's Randy from A Christmas Story. <laughs> he can't put his arms down. He's the Michelin man. He's in there waddling around the ring. When you say he throws punches, he's literally going like this. Yes. He's, he's a... It was the mummy. Um, He's the fattest, drunkest mummy you ever saw. Yes. I'm laughing tears. I, I'll i be honest, Brian. You... As this was going on, you were always head over heels in love with the mystery man. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that. And I, I always thought it was worth like a mild chuckle. I never quite got what your fascination was. I owe you an apology. Thank you. This segment, this mystery man <laughs> running was the funniest goddamn thing. Dude, and there's more to come. <laughs> it's like a... Well... Well, a thunder, I guess. Yeah. The mystery man. Oh, yeah. Body shit. The can. fucking mystery man. He's the goddamn mystery Costume man. Costume like a giant can. He's <laughs> laughing and He's laughing the goddamn laughing. mystery man. They never thought that if we're going to have this guy get physically involved in anything, he should have a suit that allows him mobility. No, are you kidding me? You think they put thought into that costume? <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? Years ago, they had RoboCop. Now they got the mystery man. RoboCop was far more mobile than That's Mystery my Man. point. Yes. Like, they put some thought and some work and some money into it back then. Eligante was more mobile they than They were Mystery losing Man. $62 million. They probably had to make this themselves. M Mother Faye Dudley on the other show was more mobile than Mystery Man. It's amazing. Well, that was it, everyone. 11 nitros to go. 11 damn nitros to go. You ready? Yes. 
I'm ready. The finishes on this show were clean pin, pin after interference, pin after about eight different things should have been a DQ, clean pin, clean pin, win somehow in a Minnesota Massacre match, which I still don't know what that is, DQ did interference in the main event after one guy attacks, but it was not a DQ after the first guy attacked. What a bad show. Oh, it was a very bad show, but you know what, Brian? I don't care. <laughs> Dude, Vinny, I'm going to remember you said that. We got 11 shows, Brian. Now, granted, everyone says that WCW 2000, including me, like the first time I watched it, WCW 2000 is, is way better. So, or 2001. Like the last 11 weeks, I think we're going to make it. But maybe there's going to be one in there that I'm going to remind you that you said this, Vinny. We'll see how it goes. All right. Today, Brian, my heart is light. I wish you'd been caught in traffic. Then showed up. My heart would not be this. light. Yeah, you'd have really massacred the show. Yes. All right, we're out of time, everybody. We're going to wrap it up for today. I'll be back with a new Observer Live tomorrow. Vinny and I will be back on Thursday for NXT and AEW. And lots of great stuff up on the front page. Video, by the way, working again. It's working, right, Rob? Nothing uh, went wrong? To the best of my knowledge, it is working. All right, so we got video up now. It's back. Video.f4wonline.com. Every Brian and Vinny show, every Observer Live, everybody figure four daily with, uh, or every fi uh, figure four daily with Filthy Tom, all available. Video.f4wonline.com. So check it out. And that is it, everybody. We'll talk to you again after a while. Adios.